Norway. You might think of it as a winter wonderland on top of the globe. Or perhaps you know it as the electric vehicle capital of the world. Or maybe it's where Disney's Frozen was based. Those were basically my three main Norwegian factoids going into this adventure. But I quickly discovered there was so much more to the story. Sure, it's a heaven for electric vehicles, but it's actually so much more than that. Hey everyone, Micah here with Electric, and today I'm coming to you from Norway, where we're visiting to see how this country turns itself into a sustainable transportation paradise. Let's check it out. First off, apologies for the darkness, but we barely had three hours of daylight in the northern tip of the country, and even Oslo in the south struggled to find six hours of light to string together for us. Apparently the dead of winter isn't prime time to visit Norway, though it does do a good job of showing off the country's rustic winter beauty. And that deep connection to nature and the outdoors in Norway is perhaps an early part of the story of how the country charted a path towards sustainable transportation long before other nations even began considering the idea. Of course, Norway's big sustainable transportation claim to fame is its sheer number of electric cars you'll see on the road. And the country holds the title of highest number of electric cars per capita. Over 80% of cars sold in Norway now are electric, and over 10% of the remainder are hybrids, meaning you've really got to hunt around to find any purely fossil fuel-powered cars that make up that remaining single-digit slice of the pie. So how did the country get there? It wasn't by chance. It wasn't because Norwegians discovered electric cars any sooner than the rest of us. It was because the country used social and economic policies to prioritize a shift away from polluting and destructive forms of transportation. That meant free passage through tolls for electric car drivers, free parking, free access to ferries, removal of taxes on electric cars, and even levying additional higher taxes on fossil fuel-powered cars. It worked, and it worked quickly. It also meant the country had to make a concerted effort to provide charging infrastructure. Even in what feels like the top of the world in the middle of nowhere, you can always find a place to charge. Though most people of course still charge their vehicles at home, and so even in a country with over 90% of new cars coming with a plug, they don't even really need tons of chargers on the streets. And that's truly green electricity too, with hydroelectric power comprising over 90% of the country's electricity generation, and wind power making up almost everything else. That means those electric cars driving around are as sustainable as possible, starting right from the energy source. But it's more than just electric cars. Commercial vehicles have electrified. Boating has electrified. You'll find chargers all over the docks because so many boat owners have embraced electrification. Those big ferries, those are electric too. We took a brunch cruise on an electric boat to see what it was like. Unlike diesel boats that always have that background rumble and vibration, not to mention the smoke and smell of exhaust fumes, cruising on an electric catamaran felt like we were on the observation deck of a fancy building. It was so quiet and peaceful, letting us actually enjoy the fjords emissions-free. When I travel elsewhere in Europe, if I'm taking a taxi or a rideshare, I'd have to hunt to find an electric one but everywhere we went in Norway, that was basically the only option. The hotel shuttle was electric, the taxis were electric, the boats were electric. We literally had to go out of our way to find a gas-powered vehicle, and that turned out to be a snowmobile, which only further underscored what a difference EVs make. So being out here in what feels like the very tip top of the world is an amazing experience. It may be freezing cold, but it is an awesome perspective on the world. However, I have to say that being on a gas powered snowmobile like this really highlights just what an advantage electric drive is. In this case, you know, we're out here blasting through the snow and it would be great to hear that snow crunch underneath you, really take in the nature around you, but you're constantly surrounded by this cloud of exhaust that you can smell, the sound of the engine underneath you. You know, my wife and I are riding on here and we can barely talk to each other just because of the sound of the engine. In fact, electric snowmobiles do exist. Electrex Fred Lambert can even tell you all about it. As it turns out, you can of course find electric snowmobiles in Norway too, though braving minus 20 degrees in Alta was hard enough for us, I wasn't about to go to Svalbard just to find an e-snowmobile. But the fact that we had to even go this far to find a fossil fuel powered vehicle speaks for itself. I mean, geez, we literally traveled by dog sled and reindeer until we could find an old fashioned dinosaur fuel vehicle. And if you thought that was the end of the story, then hold on to your fur pants because we're just getting started. 
becoming an electric car paradise isn't even Norway's final form. It was the beginning of the path away from polluting vehicles, but it wasn't the end goal. Now we're starting to see that target, as the country is rolling back electric car incentives in favor of reduced private vehicle use altogether, and even closing off to cars many streets in Oslo, turning them into pedestrian and bike-friendly avenues. Replacing gas-powered cars was a big step in the right direction, but replacing cars, period, that's the end game. And it's a move that I can fully get behind. Cars ruin cities, it's just the way it is. Cities weren't originally built for cars, but then they took over at the expense of space for people. Moving away from private car ownership returns cities to the people, and it's being done in a number of ways here. If you know anything about me, you'll know I was happy to see that electric bikes and electric scooters are a huge part of the solution. You might have thought they weren't practical in the winter, and I'll admit that ice looks a bit intimidating, but it doesn't seem to stop Norwegians armed with the right clothing and the right tires. But it's also about providing proper public transportation. Sure, we could have taken a taxi straight from the airport, but why put another car on the road when the train system already works so well and drops you right in the center of Oslo? And it gets you there faster than taking a car anyway. Though even on the train you can't get away from electric car ads. Then when you're in the city, why drive around and put another car on the road when the trams and buses can take you everywhere you need to go? And that, ladies and gentlemen, that's the future of sustainable transportation. Making cities walkable again, providing public transportation that reaches all areas, providing last mile transportation that works hand in hand with public transportation. It's a mentality that draws from Norway's culture and also strengthens that culture. The focus on sustainability permeates so far into nearly every aspect of daily life. You can't order a damn hot chocolate without getting a reusable straw. California, eat your heart out. Now is the country perfect? Of course not, no country is. But Norway has demonstrated the success that can be achieved when policy prioritizes its citizens and the environment. And if electric cars and walking and biking and public transit work so well in a country that can get so cold that your thoughts freeze, then, well, what excuse do the rest of us have? Thanks for watching everyone. We hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, why don't you give it a thumbs up? And don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss any of our future electric vehicle videos. We'll see you here next time. Sorry.